have been to Kenya and in Kenya we were eating cooked bananas. We were eating um that is like matoke, and we we're also eating chapati. It was so interesting. And I went to Uganda and we we're eating kisra, that is like South Sudanese food. And I was on a motorbike that is called the Boda Boda. Woo hey hey. Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is your favorite, your wonderful lady, lady to boom, 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 boom. Yeah, and to all the new subscribers, I'm giving you to all the new guys now. Nah, I'm giving you three seconds to subscribe, to subscribe, and to subscribe. And to all the new, uh -uh, I've said that. Oh, and to all the returning subscribers, <laughs> welcome back to the family. And you guys. Ah, my dreadlocks are giving shame. But today we're not here to talk about my locks. Wow. So, yeah. On today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my university experience. So, as you all know, um, I went to university. That is like 2019 in August 20... On the 20th of August 2019. So, remember, I'd never been like far away from my parents. I'd never been far away from home. So, basically, it was my first time leaving my parents. Mm hmm it was my first time living with my parents. It was my first time, like, just just migrating, guys, and going to a different country. Later, like, not just a different country. Like, going to the other side of Africa, the other part of Africa. Woo! And I'd never even been on an aeroplane. Woo! Mm -hmm. Everything was just traumatic now. So, my friends, my then-boyfriend, who is now my ex, and my spiritual mother, my brother, and my my parents they accompanied me to the airport that is or our tambo um, when we got there everything was fine um we didn't spend much time because um, i think i was um, my, my my flight was departing at two and i was supposed to be there and then we got there at i think half 12. and when we got there when, when it was now time for me to check in who People started crying, guys. People started crying. I won't mention your names, but I remember you. People started crying as if someone was dying, as if, as if someone was dead. We started crying, but obviously it was an emotional time. Let me not let, let me not lie. Ne? I also did cry. Like I seriously cried, cause each guys, Ulas born, she's moving away. Mm -hmm. I started crying, and then everyone was crying, and it was just cry, crying, and I was like, okay, fine, guys, bye, 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 bye. I took my small and a cute handbag, and my I started pushing my suitcases, and there I was just waving and busy crying, <laughs> and finally, I boarded the, the plane, and now the biggest worry was that, like, I'd never been to Kenya, and I didn't know that how will I get to Baraton? Because University of Eastern Africa Baraton is in Eldoret. And Mina, I was going to be landing in Nairobi. That is like where the Jomo Kenyatta Airport is. And I didn't know how to connect from Jomo Kenyatta to Eldoret. That was that, that was basically my issue the whole time. But thanks be to God, guys. When I actually when we actually got because them, we actually got to first before before getting to Kenya, we First we first we first had a layover in Malawi and then connected from Malawi to to Kenya. So when we got to Malawi guys, I had these other guys that were speaking Isizul and I'm like, you know what? These guys are South Africans. And I went to them, I'm I didn't go to them at that moment, right? But when we got to Kenya when we're actually like going out of the plane, I hurriedly went to them and then I was like, hi guys, um, I hear that you guys are speaking um, Isizul. And one of the guys was actually wearing a hoodie with the Seventh day Adventist um, logo. And then I was like, no, Maganjani, these guys are also going to Baraton Shem. So when we got to Kenya um, at the Jomo Kenyatta Airport, by the way, disclaimer Jomo Kenyatta Airport is so beautiful, like top shelf so beautiful so when we got to um jomo kenyatta airport i was like hi guys i'm davok i'm going to invest of eastern africa baraton i heard you guys speaking zulu and i assume that you're from obviously you're from south africa like yeah duh. and also saw the logo and yeah and they're like oh okay are you a new student i was like yeah well, 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 well. i'm a new student so apparently the guys were actually retaining were actually retaining students i almost said they were actually returning subscribers they were actually returning students right so they helped me with the whole process because i had um i had money but that money was in rent so they helped me convert my money into kenyan shillings they helped me um buy a sim card because obviously it's in kenya and the mode of mode of communication is swahili everyone speaks swahili left right and center it's karibu um asante sana that is thank you you know, I forgot other words, but I remember Karibu and Asante Sana. Those are the two words that I can remember, guys. My memory is just 
not not so <laughs> and, and and i never got the opportunity to fully learn kiswahili but if i if i had stayed longer i think i was going to improve my kiswahili but anyway so everyone at the airport is just speaking in in kiswahili mambo power yeah mambo power sana and everything so these guys were actually my lifesavers so we bought a meter taxi from the airport to the taxi rank right and then when we got to the taxi rank because i remember it was the I think we were five. Yeah, we were five. If I'm not mistaken, we were five. And then from the tax rank, we boarded a mini bus to the to the to the school. Cause from the tax rank from Nairobi to where the school is, that is an Eldoret. It's I think it's eight hours if I'm not mistaken. It's a journey of eight hours. So guys, yo, I had the opportunity to sleep and relax and think about the new journey that I was embarking on. And obviously, I had like goosebumps, like. Am I going to be able to fit in? Not that I was not that well, I wanted to fit in, eh? Because I knew that I mean, I'm that person who, is, who, who likes talking and I'm social. But I was worried that yo, it's a new environment. What if because like those scary, scary stories of us is that people eh, they end up doing funny, funny things and everything. So I was so scared of everything, right? But eventually, when we got to varsity, the guys um introduced me to a girl. So this is where the funny part is. The guys introduced me to a girl. So I mean, when I was leaving home, because I found out of this, I found out about this university because my aunt, which is my uncle's wife, was studying in this university. So my uncle's wife, um, they've got a close friend, right? A close friend. And that close friend has got a daughter who is studying in that passage. So when I was leaving home, my aunt told me of the girl. So I knew the name of the girl, but I didn't know the face and I didn't know the person. So when I, in my mind, I knew that when I get to Paris, I have to look for this person. Can't you guys? The guys are going to introduce me to the same person that I'm looking for. Imagine! Coincidence. Woo. So yeah, and then they're like, okay, this is gladness. I was like, oh. Is this gladness, man? And then the, and then the girl she was like, yeah, I'm gladness. But I was like, oh, guys, lifesaver, lifesaver, lifesaver. And yeah, and then we eventually became friends. She helped me also with the registration and everything. Yeah, I won't mention the whole process. And then now, back to, then now, eh, the varsity experience starts. So, first day, I was late for class. <laughs> like, I actually had a timetable. So, the first day, I think I had six four or six classes if i'm not mistaken and my first class was starting at half six so guys i don't know how i got lost but i just got lost in the science building and i ended up getting to class 30 minutes after the lecture I had finished <laughs> i was so hurt i was really so hurt i went back to my room ah i slept <laughs> <laughs> and then because i was staying in campus that meant that i was not allowed to cook like uh, I, did, I like we didn't have stoves in our in our rooms right and then in each and every room four ladies were staying in that room so when i got to that room it was me um two kenyan ladies and one congolese in that room so basically our mode of communication was english you know, guys our room there was even a duty roster of who cleans when, where, how, Jan? That's how proper and organized that room was. Yo, yeah, yeah. But obviously, cleaning wasn't a problem and everything. But like, we lived together in harmony. Everyone knew their space. So good, okay, fine. These are the boundaries. You don't overstep this one's boundary. But I mean, our first days. I didn't know pillar. I would wake up in the morning and start being hyper. Vela mood on 100%. Can't be my roommates, they're not morning people. So in the morning, they'll just want to be quiet and everything. I started getting used to the to the order of things. That in the morning, you cool down. You don't just wake up in the morning and start screaming and shouting and singing. Eh, 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 eh. You cool down. But anyway, they were the best roommates ever because they made my varsity experience also um, enjoyable. And moving on to cafeteria. So um we used to go to cafeteria three times a day. That is for like breakfast, lunch, and supper. So I mean I, I would go for breakfast mostly alone, lunch with my friends, and supper. Like we had this Zimbabwean, like Zimbabwean group. Cause I'm Zimbabwean. I'm Zimbabwean, guys. I'm a Zimbo, but I grew up in South Africa, right? So um obviously I was more used to the Zimbabweans, yeah. So again. We'd go for cafeteria, and then the cafeteria will be sitting in like in this long table. So the first month, like that is August, there are some days where I would skip going for calf simply because I had this anxiety. Not that anxiety, né? but guys, I was a bit shy. I, I've never been shy, but like, I don't know. I don't know what Vasti did to me. Like, I was scared, guys. My friends would actually call me, aren't you going for calf I'd be like, nah, 
girl is not hungry i'm not hungry but i've been lying i just didn't want to go and sit with like with a lot of people like on that table <laughs> <laughs> and then on the days that I didn't go for Gav, I would actually buy a small packet of baskets and milk and just chill in my room and be on YouTube and be relaxing up until I started getting used to the hang of things. So remember, ne? when I left South Africa in August, I was actually in a relationship. In a relationship, yes. So um September it happened that with my boy then boyfriend, the one that cried at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> no guys no <laughs> but with my boyfriend right and we broke up in september so when we broke up in september i vowed that you know what i'm not i'm not interested in any relationship in baraton no thank you i just want to enjoy life with no boys yeah so i wasn't in i wasn't in any relationship so during that time that is when i joined like the drama club i started i joined, I joined the drama club and it was so nice it was so nice. I really miss like drama. Like honestly, I really do miss drama because that is where I actually learned that ah, can't I can act? Can't it? You know, I can act. I can be so serious and act and be like, this is so wrong. This is so wrong. <laughs> this is so wrong. <laughs> I can act. Thank you. So I actually joined the drama club in September and I was given the main role. Thank you. Yes, truly. I was, I was given an, an, the main role. So basically, it was a love story. And this love story, there was a girl and, the bo and a boy. So those two that had been in a relationship. And then the guy had got a scholarship going overseas. So I was the girl. So it was like that love story. It was the guy it was supposed to do those romantic gestures. Not the serious, serious romantic gestures, but the smaller than serious ones. So yeah, I got that role and everything. Everything was nice. Everything was good. And then... My first birthday away from home, October 6th. Yo, it was my first birthday, like literally first birthday away from home. I was turning 20. Yo, I cried. I woke up in the morning. I was so emotional. I remember telling my roommates that, guys, it's actually my first birthday away from home. They're like, girl, girl, welcome to the adulthood. Like, relax. But, you know, it was so nice. Like, they really made my day special. Not just my roommates, but my friends as well. Because we went to some place. I, can't, I, I forgot the name of the place, but went to some place, we swam, that, like that swimming, ne? the, the past tense of swimming is swim, I think, ah, I don't know, but I think it's swim, yeah, so we, like, we were swimming, we bright, we were dancing, so it was actually fun, and then yeah, it happened that, ah, some guy uh, came to me, not like on the day of my birthday, but during those months, right? So this other guy approached my friend and uh, he asked for my number. I told my friend, mm -hmm. tell the guy to come to me directly now, not to go through you. If he's serious about this, he should come to me directly. So the guy came to me, told me his story. Eh. Mm. I was I had reservations because like to think of it. I'm in varsity, right? And dating in varsity is basically like a problem because everyone is going to be in your business. Once you break up, the whole school knows. So I was trying to avoid that. But eventually, um, I dated the guy. And yeah, I said I dated the guy on the 21st of November and schools closed on the, I think the first week of December. So now, guys, during that time, I also met a friend from South Sudan. Shout out to Sabbath. Yeah. That's the, that's, the, that's the name of my friend, Sapa. That's the friend that I made from South Sudan. So for December holidays, I couldn't go back home to South Africa. Like, it didn't make sense, right? It didn't make sense to go back to SA. So basically, um, I had to make a plan. And then my friend was like, hi, I've got, a I've got a family in Uganda. My aunt stays in Uganda. So if you're free, I'm actually going to Uganda for December. So you can actually take along. I'm like, okay. Oh, yeah, no problem but i actually had to talk to my parents first and then i explained to them that guys may i please go to you can't they're like hey, as long as you're going to be safe and you're going to give us the aunt's number you know then you can go hey december there is my girl going to ug going to uganda going to kampala that was my first time going to uganda going to kampala so basically when we got to Kampala, because the aunt was staying outside of Kampala. That is when I actually had the border border experience. That is the motorbike experience. That is the main mode of transport in Uganda. Yes. Yes, they've got Ubers. Yes, they've got mini taxis and buses and everything. But because the streets are small, I don't know, or the people are congested or the population is high, I don't know. But because of those reasons, right, 
eh, um, most people they use um porta portas that are like those are motorbikes. So I believe the like porta portas are more expensive than the taxis and the buses. So guys, yo, the the, the trauma that I experienced using a porta porta, hey. Okay? The other, like the other motorbike will be coming this way, and the other one is just crisscrossing the other one, and then the other one is coming in front. Yo, I was holding onto that guy's jacket with my entire life and praying, Good Father God, please, may we please arrive safely. Now, Papa, the suitcase is at the back. I'm balancing the suitcase with one hand, and I'm also holding onto this guy's jacket. <laughs> but, but, um, eventually we got home safely and we stayed there for the whole december holidays they were so welcoming and so sweet that is when i got to experience the, that that is when i ate the south sudanese food that is kisra because kisra is a bit like chapati because chapati that's kenyan right but chapati is thick and kisra is thin and kisra is a bit sour so i remember like for breakfast we'd be eating a uh, sweet potatoes and peanut butter with tea mm, that was so delicious like super super delicious i really enjoyed my stay in uganda guys really i was even betting which you know what next day 2020 december i'm even coming back to this place and they even took me around uganda because we even went to entebbe we went to Kampala several times. Like, we just explored. Like, it was super nice. They were so hospitable, to be honest. And then, this January came. So, schools opened first week of January. Né? But me and my friend went back to school second week of January. So, the drama people... Remember, I was doing drama at that moment. The drama people were started rehearsing, like, first week of January. And everyone had their roles. So, there was me in Uganda, stressed to go to Haibo. I'm still in Uganda. I don't have a role in this new drama class. In this new drama, like, script. That means when I go back to Paraton, I have to fix things and be serious about life. So, when I go to Paraton, first day, instead of going to meet up with my boyfriend, listen to this one. Instead of going to meet up with my, my then boyfriend, oh my girl... She went for drama instead. Who? My then boyfriend got angry. Tabaka, how could you, like, it's been a month without seeing me. But instead of visiting me first, you first thought of going for drama. <laughs> I was like, I was like, hey, please rest, rest, rest. <laughs> but either way, guys, I refused issues and everything was fine. So that 2020 name. We're going to be having competitions, drama competitions in February. And the competitions are going to be in Kerichu. That is another like town next to Eldoret. And like seven universities from the same district were going to be competing against each other. And the from the from the like from all the seven, the number one was going to go to Nairobi for competitions. So Villa, you know, we're putting in the effort and everything. But unfortunately, we're not able to go to Nairobi and we're not able to go to Mombasa. So I didn't go to the beach. So, 2020 March, Corona hit. Umokel had to go back to South Africa because obviously schools were closed and everything. And that is the last time that I ever went back to Kenya. So, like, to come to think of it, I was just in varsity for two months. No, not two months, man. Two semesters. Eh. So, guys, I'm an official, I'm an official university dropout. I, but that, that sounds harsh. Either way, yeah. That's my short-lived university experience. I think I think it was a total of one August, September, October, November, December, Jan, Feb. It was a total of seven months, and I really enjoyed it, guys. It was an eye-opener. I learned to be like independent, cause like I'm in a faraway country. I don't have mommy. I don't have daddy near me. I just have Daboka and the few people that I've made, the friends that I've made, and yeah. So at the end of the day, I learned to be independent. I just learned to 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 be myself at the end of the day i learned to be myself because like you just have to be yourself at the end of the day hey if people are going to love you they're going to love you for who you are not what you pretend to be so that was my short-lived university experience but i really enjoyed and disclaimer guys is corona just 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 varavuyad my life it just made my life the upside down because that was the last time that i ever saw my then boyfriend who is now my ex hi Nick. But anyway, thank you for tuning into today's video. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, and to comment. Roll to 200 subscribers. And ciao. I'm out of here.